Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. Today, we delve into the world of investing with one of the seasoned minds in the business, Jim Rogers. In a recent video, Rogers shares his valuable experiences, lessons learned, and his perspective on the current state of the global markets. As we unravel his insights, we'll gain a deeper understanding of the pitfalls to avoid and the strategies to embrace in the ever-evolving landscape of investments. Jim Rogers kicks off the discussion by highlighting a distinctive aspect of his approach to investing, his relative isolation from the investor community. Rogers admits that he doesn't spend much time with other investors, especially in recent years. He emphasizes the importance of conducting individual research and staying focused on what one knows. Drawing from his own past missteps, Rogers recounts a significant lesson learned in the late 70s when he lost everything by shorting six companies without fully comprehending the complexity of market dynamics. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. These days, especially in the last several years, I don't really know many investors, and actually, I never really ever spent much time with other people. I found, I have found that in my investing experience, if I listen to other people, I usually lose money. I don't know why. I guess it's perhaps because I haven't done enough homework or whatever. But I don't really talk to other people, uh, Jimmy, I'm, I'm afraid. So I don't have an answer to your question. I know that there are lots of great investors out there. I know that there are lots of very smart people out there. I just don't, and since I live in Singapore, that's another reason, but I just don't know who they are now. At one point in the late seven, early 70s, I made a lot of money. I was right on the market, so I, I in short. So I covered my positions and waited for the market to rally and took all my money and sold short. Two months later, I was wiped out with what I didn't know at the time. This, and by the way, I sold six companies short. All of them went bankrupt within two years, but I lost everything first because I didn't know enough about markets at that time. Yes, I'd done a great job of analysis, et cetera, but I didn't understand that markets were more complicated than that. You had to take into consideration all the other people in the market and maybe they didn't know what you knew and in that case they certainly didn't because they drove up all six of those companies great heights which i was short and then they eventually went bankrupt but i lost everything first so that was a, a lesson that i learned another one i remember is the late 70s 1980 i think it was i could see that oil was going berserk and so i shorted oil on a friday friday afternoon that weekend, Iran and Iraq went to war. Well, you can imagine, Jimmy, that oil didn't go down on Monday when Iran and Iraq were at war. So I covered my shorts and took my losses. Uh, now, you may say, though, that's bad luck. I wish I, wish I had luck. If I'd been lucky in the markets, my gosh, I would probably be very rich and very successful. But there's always somebody who knows, even when Iran and Iraq were going to war, although very few people in the press knew about it. Uh, of course, you don't just start a war without moving armies and getting prepared. So somebody knew the war was coming, except me, who foolishly shorted oil on a Friday. So those are a couple of uh, examples that I remember where I learned things. Rogers shares another compelling anecdote from the late 70s, underlining the significance of macroeconomic factors. His decision to short oil seemed logical until geopolitical events, specifically the Iran-Iraq war, unfolded over a weekend. This unexpected turn of events led to substantial losses, reinforcing the importance of considering broader global factors and in investment decisions. One of the key takeaways from Rogers' experiences is the advice to stay within one circle of competence. He encourages investors to focus on what they know best, rather than succumbing to the noise of internet forums or television pundits. Rogers asserts that embracing the boring aspect of investments can often lead to success. By patiently waiting for opportunities and avoiding unnecessary risks, investors can position themselves strategically for long-term gains. If you want to be successful, 
just stay with what you know. Don't listen to internet, TV, don't listen to other people. Everybody watching, everybody knows a lot about something, whether it's fashion or sports or cars or something. So if you stay what you know, you're probably going to be successful. You're far ahead of everybody else. I mean, I know virtually nothing about cars, but many people read about cars every day, all day. And so when they see something happening, they are better placed to make good investments than I am or most other people. And if you want to be successful, just stay with what you know and wait, wait for opportunities. And if your friends say, that's boring, be boring, be boring. Do not be afraid of being boring if you want to be a successful investor. I'm not bearish on the US, I just am not invested there and I am waiting to sell it short. Uh, yes, overall, I guess you're right. Your term is correct that I expect things to go bad in the US before long, but not today. Which probably means they will go wrong today because my time is usually so bad. Talking about investing in the US, no, of course not. The US stock market is near an all time high. So that's not, you don't find a lot of pessimism in the land, certainly not in the investment world in the US or any place for that matter. So no, on the surface, everything is fine now. And Jimmy, speaking of which, I mean, if there were peace in Ukraine, if there were peace in the Middle East, oh my gosh, stocks would go through the roof. And we'd have certainly have at least a blow off, maybe the last blow off. But no, the world is not a disaster right now. Is it going to be a disaster? Yes, of course, there'll be disasters again. It would be wonderful if we never had a disaster, if, if life everywhere was just great from now on. That's never been the case throughout history, so I know we're going to have huge problems again. The conversation then shifts towards Roger's views on the current global economic landscape. While not bearish on the U.S. market, he refrains from active investment, anticipating a downturn in the near future. Rogers expresses concerns about the escalating levels of debt worldwide since 2008, signaling that the next economic downturn could be more severe than anything experienced in his lifetime. As an avid observer of global economic shifts, Rogers shares his fascination with China's dynamic evolution. Acknowledging China's rapid growth, he emphasizes the importance of keeping a close eye on the country's developments. Rogers underscores the need for investors to adapt to changing environments and highlights that the lessons learned from China's economic evolution can be applied to various other regions. I would expect the next bear market will be the worst in my lifetime because, Jimmy, 2008, we had a huge problem because of too much debt. Oh my gosh, since 2009, the debt everywhere has skyrocketed. So the next time we have a problem, it's got to be huge probably the worst in my lifetime. I hope I'm smart enough to survive it, if, if that's fact. Uh, but if people can be prepared and understand what's going on, they will do fine. They will come out on top. And so, yes, I see potential problems down the road. I don't see them today, but I see the potential because the debt is so staggeringly high not just in the U.S. I mean, even China has a lot of debt now. You know, in 2008, China helped save the world because they had a lot of savings and they spent them. But even China has a lot of debt now. So I see the next time we have a problem, it's going to be horrible. But Jimmy, we could look back over the past few hundred years and have said that many times. And that things did get horrible. Somehow the world survived. And the smart people People who understood did okay. I hope, I hope I do okay. You know, since China is a changing and dynamic country right now, it's always interesting to go to China. So I that, guess that's the answer at the moment. The next week or two, I'll be in various cities in China. And it's, it's a huge country, as you know, growing, has been growing rapidly. Uh, so there's always something to, learn to watch to see in China, and I hope there is this time as well. But Jimmy, that could apply to many places. That could apply to Canada. That could apply to the US. That could apply to <laughs> Uzbekistan. 
many places, and I think I should go to Uzbekistan soon. I could apply to many places. Thank you.